Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of Vintage Bolton. Well, it's been a long time coming, but finally, my Acoustic Research ARXB turntable is finished. And what you're seeing right now is the build process of each stage that I took to get it there. Stay tuned to the end of the video and you'll see the completed project, or you can skip over to it. I'm not fussed, I don't mind either way. Now, if you've been following the channel, each of these processes has a larger video in my channel. So if you'd like to go and check those out in more detail, please do, and I'll put links below. But I thought it would just take quite, way too much time to play every single moment from those videos in here. So I have done a bit of a super cut. Now please stay tuned to the end and you'll be able to see the finished product. And I'm gonna go over in detail what I've done to this turntable, this magnificent turntable.
thanks for staying tuned to the end. And this is it. This is the finished piece. Overall, I am very happy with how this turned out. It wasn't without its hiccups, it wasn't without its trials and tribulations, but we got there in the end. I'm not gonna waffle on too much. Obviously, I wanted to recreate that plinth. And seeing that woodworking is still an up and coming skill of mine, I'm very happy. The original plinth was just a chipboard, veneered, and it has a lip, obviously here, which holds the top plate up. Now, <laughs> I wanted to avoid veneering at all costs. I just don't think my skill set covers it yet. So I decided to go with a two-tone uh, finish. Uh, the bulk of it in just a pine and then a Maranti trim for the um, lip and these sort of feet that I created here, which helped to strengthen my, my miter joints anyway. Not the most expensive of timbers, but that was the budget I really wanted to challenge myself with. The timber for this project cost under $20. So I think that just keeps in with the theme of the acoustic research turntable. Such a budget turntable that performs so highly above so many other turntables at you know three times the cost. Obviously I polished up as much as I could. I rewired the tone arm and installed a Technics arm wand, which means I can swap head shells now as much as I like without fear of damaging that old acoustic research head shell. I also installed, I had two pivot posts from the tone arm. I installed one with sapphire cut bearings and one with ball bearings. In the end I went with the sapphire cut bearings. They are above and beyond anything you can get these days and probably single-handedly one of the biggest improvements you can make on this turntable. Or probably any turntable I think. Everything was completely clean the bearing wells, new Delrin thrust pads, a new ceramic ball bearing for the tone arm, and as you may have seen in the build process, I dampened the pulley with some plasticine. It's a reversible modification. Some people like to do it with a resin, which sets in place, but it's a bit harder to reverse. Plasticine is great, because I can, you know, play with it, get the result. I'm after and it's not completely permanent plus plasticine being what it is and being the ingredients that it's made out of never changes shape, never cracks and dries. Just like Gumby. Remember Gumby? I installed new power cable, new RCA cables. I didn't install female RCA jacks or an IEC power jack and I just, I've always liked point to point wiring as much as I can on anything. What am I not happy about? Well, probably the motor's still bugging me a little bit. I didn't want to splash out on a brand new motor. And I thought that stripping it and servicing it as much as possible would help. And I think it has, it's definitely, you know, reduced that well and flutter and its speed stability is awesome. But it's still a little bit noisy. So that's something down the track I may upgrade. I'm actually considering whether to still install another Hurst AC synchronous motor or try something a bit more radical like a brushless DC motor with a motor controller which again I think would future proof this turntable much like the Techniques arm wand and the SME head shells. One of my favorite parts and this is not going to be for everyone is obviously the top plate. Once upon a time I tried to make a living as an artist, an exhibition artist. I don't anymore, but it's really great to be able to combine my love of abstract art with my, my passion for hi-fi. Of course, you can see that picture more when the, uh, when the platter is off. If you have any questions about this, any comments, subscribe and leave a comment below. Love to hear from you. Bye for now.